So have you been told that you have to wear rubber bands with your braces? Or maybe you just know someone who does have rubber bands with their braces and wanna learn more. Well, in today's episode, we're gonna review why your orthodontist makes you wear rubber bands and five of the most commonly asked questions with people that have rubber bands. So let's get started. What's up guys, Dr. Greg here back with another episode of Braces Explained. I hope you guys have all been doing awesome and had a great week. In today's episode, I wanna expand on something that we talked about over two years ago, and that's rubber bands with your braces. Like always, I'm gonna go ahead and put the timestamps in this corner, so if there's something you wanna jump straight into, just go ahead and click over there, because I'm gonna first review a little bit on how rubber bands work and why your orthodontist asks you to use them. So your orthodontist is an expert at lining up your teeth in the upper and lower arches and setting them up so that they can be in the most stable position within their bones. So your orthodontist can and line your teeth up within the upper and lower arches independent of one another, but sometimes you might have your upper teeth that are too far forward, which will result in a big overjet, or what a lot of people call an overbite, or your lower jaw might be too far forward, which is called an underbite. And these are some situations where your orthodontist might ask you to wear rubber bands. Our goal for a proper bite is to have your upper canine tooth fit between your lower canine and first premolar. So you kind of want it to be like a little, like a fit like a gear. And that's what we call class one canine. That's a that's a proper bite. Yes, there's other things to a bite, like how much overbite and overlap and all those other things, which we'll talk about in another video. But regarding the canines, you want them to fit together. So if your canine teeth are too far forward compared to your lower ones, or your lower ones too far back, so if your upper canines are ahead of your lower canine and first premolar in that groove, that's called a class two bite. That means that your upper teeth are too far forward in relation to the lower. Now on the flip side, if your upper canines are behind that little groove, that means that you have a class three bite and you probably have somewhat of an underbite. And that's how these rubber bands get their names. So if you have a class two bite, your orthodontist will ask you to wear class two elastics to fix the class two bite. And if you have a class three bite, your orthodontist might ask you to wear class three elastics to fit that bite. And if you guys wanna learn a little bit more about these elastics, I have a whole video that introduced this topic and I'm gonna link it out in this corner as well as put it in the description of today's video. But this is just a little bit of a quick review before we get to the FAQs. So now that you know why your orthodontist asks you to wear rubber bands sometimes, we're gonna review the five most commonly asked questions about elastics during orthodontic treatment. And these questions are in no specific order. They're just five of the most common questions that I encounter on a day-to-day -day basis. And one which was probably the most asked question on my previous video about elastics was, does everyone need to wear rubber bands during their orthodontic journey? And the answer to that is no, but most people have to wear rubber bands, okay? This is because you might have a class one bite, but as we're aligning the teeth, we want to hold that bite together. Now, this isn't in every single case, but in most cases, your orthodontist for at least a little bit of time will have you wear these elastics. And these elastics will either hold your bite together or adjust it. Now, if your case is primarily a case where your bite needs to be corrected, you probably are gonna have to wear your elastics more than someone who already had that class one bite to start off with. But that's not saying that every single person is gonna need elastics. And if and when you get these elastics, I highly recommend everyone either ask their orthodontist if they provide this tool or purchase this tool online. It's kind of difficult when you first get your braces on to put your rubber bands on because it's, it's a new motion that you're not used to. So I highly encourage everyone to use this tool. It has one side that actually hooks the rubber band and the other side that pushes it. And you can use it to help put your rubber bands in your mouth. Especially during these times with the coronavirus, you wanna be careful not to be putting your hands in your mouth. So using this tool will be really, really helpful at putting the rubber bands on the teeth. And if your orthodontist doesn't carry these tools and you don't know where to get one, I'm gonna put a link in the description of today's video so you can get one on Amazon in case you need it. So let's move on to question number two that I get asked a lot. And that is, what if I run out of my rubber bands? Can I use my friends or buy more online? So for this question, I really don't recommend that you use anybody else's or anyone else's rubber bands other than the one that your orthodontist provided. This is because one, every elastic that your orthodontist prescribes has a certain strength and a size. So the size really depends on, you know, how big is this rubber band? Is it really small? Is it medium? Is it big? There's different sizes and there's also different strengths. So the strength is how strong is this rubber band in pulling? Now, if you can imagine your orthodontist wants a really, really light force, but you use your friends or you buy a rubber band online that has a strong force, that can really, really mess up the treatment plan. This is because let's say you're not in a strong enough wire, but you're using a really strong rubber band. That can really mess up the bite. So I know sometimes you might lose your elastics or your friend might have a colored elastic that you're jealous of and you want to use theirs. I don't recommend doing this. Let's say you're absolutely in a jam. You're not near your orthodontist to go back and pick up more, but you need more rubber bands. In cases like this, I'd recommend that you call your orthodontist and see what size and strength elastics you had. You can purchase some elastics online, but you have to be really, really careful that, like I said, they're the right size and they're the right strength. Also, if you guys have any sort of latex allergy, please be careful that if you were to purchase those things online, that they're also latex free. A lot of these rubber bands have latex in them, 
and your orthodontist has a special stash for those who have latex allergies, but when you're ordering online, no one's gonna double check that allergy for you. So please be careful if you are gonna buy elastics online, be sure to get one that is the right size, the right strength, and if you have a latex allergy, is latex free. And this kind of perfectly leads into question number three, which is, can I double up my rubber bands? And this question I generally say, ask your orthodontist, because it depends on where you are in your treatment. If you are in a strong enough wire, a lot of the times your orthodontist might say, you know what, go ahead and double up your rubber bands. That will help out. But if you are, like I said, in these early night high wires and really, really thin wires, you don't wanna to use too much force because like I said, it's gonna mess with your bite. If you're in these early wires, it's gonna cause more harm than good. So you really have to be careful and ask your orthodontist if you can double up with these rubber bands. But what I usually see is when people ask this question, they think that, okay, I could take off 12 hours and then wear double for the next 12 hours. And it doesn't really work like that. The thing with elastics is it's all about consistency. And when you're trying to move teeth, it's all about the consistency of the force. So if you're doubling up, that means that you're at least having to wear one for the whole day. You know what I mean? You don't want to be taking time off and thinking that doubling up will make up for it because it won't. You actually will not make much progress if you know you're taking a day off and then wearing double for another day. It doesn't work like that. I wish it did, but it doesn't work like that. The key about these elastics, like I said in a previous video, is it's all about consistency. So please wear your rubber bands all day long or how your orthodontist prescribed it. And if you're watching this video and you have to have rubber bands in, go put them in. So let's move on to number four, and that is, can these rubber bands actually break my braces off of my teeth because they're too strong? And the answer is no. Your rubber bands are not strong enough to actually break brackets off of your teeth. If you notice that you have a bruised bracket, bruised bracket, if you notice that you have a loose bracket, this means that you probably did something to break the bracket by eating a food or chewing on something that you shouldn't have, and you're just noticing now that when you put the rubber band on, the bracket's moving. If this is to occur, I recommend that you give your orthodontist a call so that they can schedule you and you'll put that bracket back on your tooth, but the rubber bands aren't strong enough to actually break braces off of your teeth. If they did, we wouldn't be using them. It actually takes quite a bit of a quick force to like snap a bracket off of a tooth, and a rubber band isn't strong enough to do that. Even if you're doubling up, it shouldn't be able to break your braces. But like I said, what would break it is eating something that you shouldn't be eating. So please be careful, like I always say, to maintain good hygiene and avoid the foods that you shouldn't be eating in order to make your braces journey as pleasant and quick as possible. And speaking of eating, let's move on to question number five, which is, can I wear my rubber bands while I'm eating? And this one really comes down to you. If you feel comfortable eating with your rubber bands in, there's no need to take them out. It actually would work just fine. It just seems a little bit difficult to eat with your rubber bands in. And this is for those people that are really good about wearing their rubber bands, but whenever they take them off to eat, they always forget to put them back on. So in those cases, if you feel comfortable, you can go ahead and leave your rubber bands on when you're eating. What I recommend is that you at least change your rubber bands three times throughout the day. The reason I say three times a day is because these rubber bands, you know, they get fatigued after a while and you wanna keep changing them out so that they stay fresh and deliver that constant level of force to the teeth but that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to change them out every single time that you eat. But you kind of want to change it out every six to eight hours just to make sure that there is that constant force. Be careful though, because if you're eating with these rubber bands in, there might have a higher chance that they snap. Just because they're constantly being fatigued from you opening and closing, they, they might break a little bit quicker. But bottom line is yes, you can eat with your rubber bands in, just remember to replace them at some point throughout the day. And for the most specific answers with your case, like always, please have open communication with your orthodontist. They know your case better than I do or anybody else for that matter. So if you have any questions that are specific to your case, let your orthodontist know and have that open communication and that open dialogue so that you can have the most pleasant experience and braces journey. If you guys have any questions about elastics that I didn't address in today's video, please go ahead and leave it in the comments of today's video. And while you're down there, be sure to hit the thumbs up and the subscribe button if you haven't already. And if you guys have not yet joined the Braces Club, I am highly encouraging everyone that is a subscriber on the channel to join it. It's an online community on Facebook and where we discuss cases, where we talk to each other. It's a support group, as well as it helps answer questions, keeps you abreast with what I'm up to. I hop on there and answer people's questions. So it's a really, really cool community. If you guys haven't joined it or checked it out, go ahead and do that. I'm gonna put it in this corner as well as in the description of today's video. But yeah, that's pretty much all I have for you guys today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will catch you guys next week on another episode of Race Explained. But for now, Dr. Greg out.